Hey, we give you the facts. It's not what you think. Popeye News Link. Young King. One yard. Bless. Good morning, Popeye. Grandma watch Popeye's every morning and every night. What am I think? What am I think? You're listening to Popeye News Links. This is the Admiral Tibet who I represent. And remember, the time is so serious. Contankerous and dangerous. This is Popeye News Links. Greetings. Greetings, viewers and subscribers. PNL birthday shout out to those three queens on your screen. Well, the one to your left, that's Sharon. Queen Sharon, you celebrated your birthday on Thursday. In the middle is Alison. Queen Ali, you are celebrating your birthday today. And to your right, that's Camille, popularly known as Michelle. Queen Michelle, you are also celebrating your birthday today. Queen Sharon, let's hope that on Thursday, you had a wonderful birthday. Queen Ali and Queen Michelle, let's hope that today, you had a wonderful birthday. And may all of you live to see enough more. In today's journey, we are heading into Montego Bay. Remember that we are on our way to Portland. Continue to sit back, continue to relax and continue to enjoy this journey with me. In the news today, many times I have carried stories. Yes, I know. The nights are hot, but I have seen this a whole heap of times. The fact that persons are living on the upstairs or second floor of a house or an apartment, they sleep with the windows open, trying to stay cool. Please, me I beg you now. Don't do it. Hoodlums, they are out and they are looking for easy targets two very hard-working ladies they are in their mid-20s they found out the mistake they made and they had to pay a price for it they are both living in the cedar grove estate area of portmore in the parish of saint catherine both of them they are living at the top of a two-story house in separate rooms we are told that the two ladies they went to bed Thursday night with their windows open. When they woke up yesterday morning, they realized that their laptops, tablets, phones, cash, their handbags containing their IDs, bank cards, and other valuables were stolen from their room. Hoodlums gained access to the room via the open windows. Can you imagine? Can you just imagine how these ladies felt when they woke up and realized what took place last night? Boy, may I tell you, people, especially ladies, because I've seen this happening more than one time to females. Please be alert. Be aware of what is happening. Take nothing for granted. In this next story, I got two WhatsApp messages from Two different persons asking me how comes I did not carry this incident. So I decided to do some digging and this is what I found out. The incident took place on the early morning of Sunday, October 1, about 6.30. It took place along the Hyde Main Road in the parish of Trelawney. We are learning that a guy, his first name is Nicholas. Nicholas is said to be in his early 30s and he's living in the albert town area of trelawney nicholas he was driving a white toyota mark x motor car he was traveling from clarkstown towards duncan's direction in the car with him were four females and we are told that at least two of the females they were on their way to work the females were one that female on your screen her name is Janiqua Johnson. She is 30 years old and Janiqua was a waitress. She worked at the Iberia Star Hotel in St. James. A 16-year-old girl named Sierra Lee. A lady who we are told is in her mid-40s. She's named Suzette. And another lady who we are told might be in her early 50s. She's called Pat. They were all in the car. So, they were traveling along the Hyde Main Road. On reaching a section of the road, we are told that Nicholas, 
he was in the process of negotiating that corner on your screen when he ended up losing control of the Toyota Mark X. And I know if you guess, if speed or speeding was the cause, why Nicholas lost control of the Mark X. As a result of him losing control, the Mark X, it ended up plunging into a gully. And if you look on your screen, that is where the Mark X came to a stop. If you look on your screen, no. There is the Mark X. That was the damage that was done to the Mark X. Janiqua, she was seriously injured and she ended up dying as a result. Nicholas, the driver, he received injuries to his hands, his neck and his chest. 16-year-old Ciara Lee, Pat and Suzette, they were also seriously injured. They were rushed to a hospital where they were treated and admitted. Sad indeed. In this next story, this one took place on the evening of Heroes Day. Monday, October 16, almost 7 o'clock. It took place along Great Jard Street in Savannah Lamar in the parish of Westmoreland. Now, watch this video. <laughs> The man in the white marina. His name is Mr. Lansford Banting, but he was popularly known as Tucky Lance. He was born on August 22, 1956, 67 years old, and he was living at 35 Darling Street in Savannah Lamar in the parish of Westmoreland. We are learning that Tucky Lance, he was riding his blue and silver bicycle from downtown Great Jard Street to uptown Great Jard Street and approaching the intersection of Barclay Street and Great Jard Street right across from the Savannah Lamar Library. We are not sure what happened but it is reported that Tucky Lance, he made a swerve to the right. As a result, he collided into the left rear view mirror and the front left door of a grey Toyota Noah that was traveling behind him. As a result of this collision, Tucky Lance, he was thrown from the bicycle onto the asphalted main road. He received serious head and bodily injuries. The police, they were informed and they rushed with Tucky Lance to the Savannah Lamar Hospital where he was admitted in a serious condition. Tucky Lance, we are told that his condition was not getting any better. In fact, it was getting worse. He was subsequently transferred to the Cornwall Regional Hospital. But Thursday night, October 19, Tucky Lance, he succumbed to his injuries. Sad indeed. Now, over in the parish of Hanover, we are learning that this morning, Saturday, October 21, about 8.30, there was a fatal accident at the bridge right in the vicinity of the Green Island Primary School. It is said that a man, he ran out onto the main road into the path of a motor car that was driving along the main road. The man, he was hit down and he ended up dying. I'm doing some digging and will be updating this story in a subsequent video. Stand by for that. In this next story... This one took place yesterday evening, Friday, October 20, about 6.30. It took place at Texas in the Norwood area of St. James. We are told that residents of the area, they heard gunshots being fired and they called the police. When the police went and made checks, a guy, his name is Clayton Brown, but he's popularly known as Richie. Richie was born on July 13. 1983, 40 years old. Richie, he was seen lying on his back at the front of his gate with multiple gunshot wounds to his upper body. Richie appeared to have died on the spot. We are told that when the police processed this crime scene, seven 9mm spent shells were recovered from the scene. 
The man. The man. So let me ask you something. <laughs> let me ask you something. Have you hit on the love button as yet? If you have not yet done so, remember to hit on it. Also, if you are over here watching our videos and you have not yet subscribed, hit on the subscribe button as also. Hit on the notification bell. Then click all so that whenever we drop a new video, you will be one of the first to be notified. In the final story for today, on Tuesday, October 17, I carried two stories. There were about two incidents that took place in the Old Bay area of St. Catherine. In the first incident, I told you that that lady on your screen, her name is Kemisha Simone Peters, but she was popularly known as Spiggy B. She is 30 years old and she lived at Station Lane in the Old Arbor Bay area of St. Catherine. I told you that Sunday night, October 15, Spiggy B, she had gone on the road to look for her son when she was shot and killed by hoodlums at Peters Lane in the same Old Arbor Bay area. The very next afternoon, Monday, October 16, about 4 o'clock. That guy on your screen. His name is Kirk McNeil, but he was popularly known as Cock Chicken or Kirky. And he also lived at Station Road. The same Station Road where Spiggy B lived. Cock Chicken, he was seen lying in a pool of blood in the mangroves at Terminal Road in the same Old Arbor Bay area. He had received gunshot wounds to his head. Now, when I carried the stories on Tuesday, I had asked if the stories were related and I had promised to do some digging. Well, guess what? I did some digging. Both stories are related. Listen this now. Listen. So, remember I told you that Spiggy B, she had gone on the road looking for her son who had left out of the yard. Two things were happening at the same time. Spiggy B, she was walking along the road innocently and four hoodlums went to kill a guy on Peter's Lane. We are told that that guy, he's in his mid-twenties and he's called Mikkel. Listen this now. Four hoodlums went to kill Mikkel. One of them, we are told that he's called Platypus. Another one of the four... He's called Cock Chicken or Kirky. You heard that? Are you following me? So, the allegations are that Platypus, Cock Chicken, and two other hoodlums then make a step to go and kill Mikkel. Apparently, Mikkel was on the lookout. We are told that Mikkel, he was in his yard when the hoodlums arrived. The hoodlums, they saw him and they opened gunfire at him. But Mikkel, he managed to run off. The hoodlums chased him, still firing shots at him. But he managed to run away and made good his escape. Spiggy B, who was walking along the road, she was not so lucky. She received gunshot wounds to her abdomen and she died as a result. Remember now, Mikkel, he escaped and he knew who his attackers were. So, Cock Chicken, who was identified as one of the four hoodlums. Karma visited him quick and fast. Hoodlums, they put bullets into Cock Chicken's head in the mangroves at Terminal Road, killing him on the spot. Platypus, he was picked up by the police. His current name is Jamur Campbell and like Cock Chicken, he is 21 years old. He's living in the East Bay area of Daga Bay in Old Arbor Bay. Platypus, he was charged by the police for murder, really killing of Spiggy B and other firearm related charges. And he'll be going to the courts shortly. The mayhem continues. Blessed love, everybody. Tell a friend, for tell a friend, for tell a friend. About Papa News Link and PNL Blog TV. Like, subscribe, and share. Quick Silver Sin, if we just unite, what a country this will be. If we just unite, Jamaica live in unity. If we just unite, what a country.
Tell them. 